Hi guys, in today's episode, I'll be fixing my QNAP NAS. Unfortunately, it fell ill to quite a common problem. One of the MOSFET transistors fails. And since my unit is pest warranty, it costs an arm and a leg to have it serviced in official service. While it's a quite easy fix in a service, they replace the whole back platter and doing it yourself, you can just fix the transistor. And since I got it from AliExpress now, we can proceed with a fix. Although it turns out you actually don't even need the transistor. The package arrived in under two weeks. Funny thing is, on AliExpress now, they offer an upgrade shipping for some of the packages. So you can choose one of those self pickup boxes and this arrived like in a week and a half. To have a backup, I also ordered the same transistors from my local auction service Allegro, so that's like the Polish eBay, and it arrived in something like a week. The difference, this costs, well, see an offer here. While it's from Allegro, they came out to something like 25 zloty per piece, two pieces, 50 zloty, so that's, what is that gonna be, $12, $15, probably around 15 with shipping, so really, really expensive compared to China. And as you can see, the time difference wasn't that large. But before we get to the repair, let me show you. My friend sent me a image, a messenger asking if I want one of these. I have to look up the English name. It's called Sparasis Crispa. I don't know what's the common name for this. So, uh, species of fungus in Virginia Sparasis in English, it is sometimes called cauliflower fungus. Well, it does look like a cauliflower. Excellent taste, excellent aroma. Just a bit difficult to clean these. My friend says there's a lot of these now in the woods, but they just don't eat these. I'm surprised because it's an excellent tasting mushroom. You can fry it. You can put it as a preserve. You can make, what do you call it? Flatschki in Polish. Flatschki, well, a common translation is in intestines, but it's actually the stomach of a cow. So it looks similar. But of course, with a fungus, you'll probably won't have some reservations in eating something like that. But if you want to, you can try Flatschki in Poland or one of those Polish traditional stores. Excellent food. So even though it's a stomach, it's nothing dirty about it. Okay, so a whole strip of 10 transistors or MOSFETs, as you prefer to call them. So you'll find the link below if you want to do the same repair, although you actually don't need these. These are used to switch on the disks in sequence. I thought it's used for the hot swap function, but apparently not. So that's just not to have the power supply overloaded. But as I looked at the specifications of the hard drives, each one can pull a max of something like 25 watts when it starts up and it's about five watts during normal operations while it's the power supply, I believe is something like 250 watts. So even if we have eight units, that's 200 watts, we'll still have something like, what's that? 21 20% power reserve. I think we should be safe with just, instead of using the transistor, just shorting the power so it starts up immediately. As for this package, we should have some jewelry here. beautiful stone like that. The video doesn't show the beauty of this. So I'll just throw you a picture I'll take later. Look at this beautiful colors. It's 
So I'll use this to make a pendant for my wife. Very beautiful. Maybe if I look of the light. Well, I'll throw you a picture and you'll see for yourself. So let's get upstairs and try fixing the nuts. So here's my little man cave. You can see we've rearranged monitors. It was wider in the past, but I added this cabinet now. So I'll just move my seat. Here's the failed NAS. As you can see, this disc is glowing red. I already removed this one earlier because of the errors and made the rate smaller. This one's green, but on the other hand, when you look on the monitor, it's not recognized at all. So in the past, I even already tried swapping a disc with a new one. It turns out it wasn't necessary to buy one because it's not the, the discs. It's the power supply of a platter. Here are the MOSFETs bought locally. You can see exactly the same, except the price for two being much more expensive than the price of 10 from China. So what's most important in fixing this? First of all, switching the unit off. And once you switch it off, also when you remove the discs, you should use a pencil and mark the order they're in, because later when you replace them, that matters for having the RAID rebuild itself properly. Shut down. Yes. So now we just need to wait. Apparently, for some unknown reason, it takes a really, really long time. Is how it'll be the easiest to remove this. Do we just unscrew the screws marked with paint? Or do we have to take the entire case apart? Okay, so as you can see, I had to take off the top cover. Unscrewing those screws, I was able to move the platter to the side, but there's this plug here, which you won't be able to unplug as it has this notch on top. And I'm showing you the repair on the ts 831 x Somebody here on the internet was fixing some other unit. And as you can see, instead of replacing the transistor, they put jumpers here and I'll probably use the same solution. So this is an example on this QNAP. Although the problem seems to be common on many other units, apparently they're all using the same transistors and it's, I don't know, not powerful enough or subject to static discharge and fails. Well, MOSFETs are usually very sensitive so I think I'll go with this solution with the jumpers and won't we'll be trying to replace it as it's probably gonna fail in a short time again. Anyways, of course, I'm doing this at my own risk. I recommend that you replace the transistor. Of course, if you have warranty, return it to QNAP. Don't touch anything yourself. Otherwise, you'll avoid your warranty. My pictures of actually the pictures of my wife are duplicated on the second QNAP. You know, the wife can be really dangerous if you destroy any of her pictures. So this QNAP is just the same pictures and I'm only risking losing some movies, which I'm working on ongoingly. So it would be a small loss compared to all that history. And as I said, the power supply is 250 watts so jumpers like that theoretically should be okay so let's get the platter out
you can see we've got one of these transistors for issue of a slots. These three first ones are failing, so we'll just put the jumpers on these and see if that helps. Just a quick shot of before situation. It's the 4957 AGM. So I won't be showing you the soldering itself. As you can see, these elements are really small. So if you don't feel comfortable with anything like that, find somebody who is, because it's quite easy to screw this up. So now a close inspection. Oh, the soldering doesn't look too nice, but to tell you the truth, these are really, really small. So it's very important to do a thorough inspection so we don't have any shortcuts. Oh, as you can see, it did a little damage to the disc sockets. Hopefully it'll still fit in here. And having a visual inspection, hopefully didn't do any short circuits and won't burn the mass to the ground. Okay, so let's try it out. So now the moment of truth, I'll try to start up without any discs. So in case something is wrong, there's a short circuit. We'll just lose the case without the discs. Okay, so the state status is green. So everything should be okay. Let's switch it off. Put the top cover on, fill the discs, and see if it's working. So once we have a cover off, maybe let's just take a look at the memory module. Eight gigabytes. So there will be some opportunity on eBay. Maybe we'll buy another one like this and expand this to 16 gigs. So another dry run just to see if it connects to the network and it seems to work okay. So we'll switch it off again, fill in the discs and let's cross our fingers. They'll be working correctly. As you can see by my shirt, it's already the next day. As you can see the NAS is working. Well, I won't say perfectly because you can see the led shining red on the second disc that's because when the power was starting to fail there were errors which occurred on the disc so right now you need to scan it but as you can see the previously red three is now green one is recognized so it was obviously the power supply so now we just need to scan the disc after it corrects all the errors and rebuild the raid and it should be as good as new so, of course, I recommend that you rather replace those MOSFET transistors instead of doing those jumpers. Well, there's always a risk you can overload the power supply and cause a fire. I wouldn't want to be responsible for that. So, rather than that, replace the transistor and probably replace it again and again and again. It's gonna probably also fail in the future, but this would be the proper way to do it. How much time left? No estimation, unfortunately. I think it's gonna be two, three days before we get this back and running. But in general, you can, well, I can consider this repair as successful. So that's it for today. Be sure to like, share, subscribe, and see you again soon.